intelligent design has been an idea in science and culture since the early Greek philosophers about 500 years before Christ. People noticed then that the world around us, the laws of nature and the life we have uh, fit together so well, it, it seemed that somebody had put it together. And that idea persisted even as more and more uh, facts about life came to light. Uh, there was a uh, physician in Rome named Galen in the year about 100 or 200 uh, AD, and he was the most prominent scientist of his time who did anatomical work, and he just marveled over the design of the human body. Uh, he saw that the organs and uh, systems of the body were fit very well for their purposes, and it seemed as if a, a mind were behind life. So design is actually recognized by seeing how different parts fit together to work together. You look at the physical parts and uh, notice that they are, uh, they are well uh, adjusted to their purpose. And the idea of design was uh, dominant among all thinking people uh, for up to the, uh, the, at least the year 1850. There was a, a man named the Reverend William Paley in the year 1800 who put together a, a famous argument called the watchmaker argument. And he said essentially that if you find a watch, you know it's designed because you see how the gears and mechanisms work together uh, to tell time. And the mechanisms in life are even more wonderful and intricate than, the, than a watch. And so we're uh, justified in concluding that was designed. The idea of design then went into eclipse after Darwin wrote his book on the origin of species. He uh, proposed that there was a non-intelligent process, uh, natural selection working on the variation that exists in life that uh, could explain the appearance of design. And since his work, more and more people um, left the idea of design behind and ascribed all the beauty and all the intricate mechanisms that we see in nature to unthinking processes, to just randomness uh, kind of filtered by uh, events, by history. The intel modern intelligent design um, movement began around the year 1980, 1985 or so. Uh, when several scientists started questioning whether Darwin's theory could explain uh, the development of life and whether chemical processes, undirected chemical processes, could explain the origin of life. And these were made possible by the fact that science was learning more and more and more about life than Darwin knew back in Darwin's day. Uh, biology was really rather primitive compared to current uh, knowledge. Uh, for example, Darwin and his contemporaries thought that the cell was a simple glob of protoplasm, pretty much a piece of jelly. And it didn't seem too hard that such a thing could just spontaneously form uh, in the earth. So they didn't think the origin of life was a big deal. But then when DNA was discovered and metabolism was discovered and the molecular machines that are found in uh, the cell were discovered, uh, people started wond wondering whether life could spontaneously arise and, and the problem has only grown worse as we know more and more. Uh, so with this as a background, as biology has increased its knowledge, more people have questioned whether unintelligent processes can produce life. And they are uh, going back to the 
uh, original idea that had been lost and, and forgotten that we see design when we see all the uh, parts of a system working together and that looks like there is a, a mind behind, uh, behind life. And uh, we're currently in the midst of that uh, recovery of, of our old uh, understandings and, and it's a very much an active battle uh, at this point.